All right, I'm going to see if I can get this to work. Um, Today we're going to be talking about uh, intolerance. And, you know, we've talked about it before on the uh, on the broadcast, but why is it with phrases like, I don't want my children growing up in a racial jungle, or vote for me or you ain't black, why is it that so many right, so many left-wingers, particularly African-Americans and minorities, tend to believe the Republicans are the racist ones. I get it all the time on my broadcast. Why would you guys continue claiming Trump is racist when Joe Biden is the most racist there ever has been? Well, I want to I want to play something for you. This happened, I believe, this weekend at a Trump rally in Nevada, if I'm correct, in Nevada. This was an Alabama senator, and I want you to hear this comment he made at a Trump rally, which was widely cheered upon. So there was no issue with him saying this, but I want you to hear what he had to say. Let's just roll the tape. <laughs> they won't crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They are not owed that. Now, who the hell is he talking about? The same people who want reparations are the ones that do the crimes and are pro-crime. Now, we can talk about vote for me, you ain't black. We can talk about children growing up in a racial jungle. But someone let me know why this man could say that at a MAGA rally to applause and cheers. Because we have to ask, who is he talking about? Who is he suggesting that wants reparations, commits all of the crimes, and happens to be pro crime simultaneously. Crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They are not owed that. Who are they? Who the hell are they? I'm going right to the box. I don't even know how to respond to it. So I'm going to go to the box and talk to you folks. Gabashi 101 program. I need to know who are they? Gabashi. Yeah, he's he's talking about me. Elaborate. What do you mean? You see, like, <clears throat> the thing is, right, I have this ideology, right? Let's say, for example, you know, we're in line for the bathroom, and there's four white people in front of you. And, you know, I come, and I'm and I'm the black one. All okay. the people need to let me skip ahead. Did I lose you? I can I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. You said you were waiting in line to the bathroom behind white folks, and you're suggesting that they should let you skip ahead. Is that what I'm hearing? Not only that, right? They should apologize while they're letting me skip ahead. And why do you the believe that they've caused? Um, you know, like remember how like um, uh, Kamala Harris and Biden and all of those when BLM was going down, they all you know knelt. I feel like all white people should kneel and apologize for the oppression of the black people. Uh, okay, are you pro crime? Yes, you see, George Soros is a saint. No, I'm not seeing you. You're, you're giving, wait a minute. You're giving me other people. You said they're talking about me. So let's stick with you. Are you yeah. pro crime? Yes, yes. Give me, yes, I am. You, you elaborate a, on why you elaborate on why you are pro crime. You see, if a black man steals, it's because the white man denied him a job. Okay, so you're a thief. Um, no, I wouldn't steal. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. Right. Figure it out. Take your time. Well, so, well, he stated that the people yeah. who do all the crime are pro-crime. You said he's talking about you. 
Are you a person that does all the crime? You're, you're telling me it's about you, so you do a lot of crime. Am I correct? Well, you um, got all. The well, <clears throat> see, George Soros is allowing any black man that is arrested. George Soros is not. Right, wait a minute. Stealing. George Soros is not black or you. We're talking about you. <laughs> not yeah, a guy that's worth to, ninety you, million dollars. We're talking about you. Yeah, but you have to you have to support all the uh, all the DAs that George Soros puts in place, right? Or else you know you're not you're not black. You're you're okay. You're give against, me, you're against you being black. Out, since you started out by saying he's talking about you, give me some of the crimes you've committed since you're pro crime. Well, you see, I used to smoke, and now thanks to Biden, right? Um, um, uh, all my smoking's not you a crime. Smoking's not a crime. Give me some crimes. Uh, marijuana smoking marijuana was a crime. But all right, give me another one. Crime. Okay, give right. me another one. You you um, do all the crimes. Give me some more. Yes, shoplifting. I do shoplifting in LA, and if it's uh, under a thousand dollars, right, I do not get to go to prison. And I want to thank Saint Soros for that, right? Okay. Uh, uh, you know, for implementing that, Saint Soros, you know, is amazing, right? Um, okay. He has realized that we are, we have been oppressed, right? We are. We make up for thirteen percent of the population and sixty percent of the prison population. He's letting us out. So is Biden, right? Um, so if you are white and you are against this, you know, um, um, uh, letting black people out of prison, right? Letting black people steal, right? Letting black people um, get away with stealing. Yeah, man. Like you know, you're a racist. Okay. All right. Well, so essentially what you're saying is you yourself are a bad person to society. You steal. You smoke, you commit crimes. What you're telling me right now is I myself, your humble correspondent, am communicating yes. with a bad person. No, you're communicating with a saint. You just said you commit all the crimes. Take your time, figure it out. You you get you which side of the aisle are you on? You told me yourself. He's talking to me. I yes. commit all the crimes. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay. And and because the reason I'm committing all these crimes is because in my neighborhood, it's all black, but all the cops that are there are all white. And what they want to do is they want to put me in prison, right, for um, trying to feed my family. You know what I mean? $7 an hour is enough to feed my dog. That is why I steal and sell drugs. And, and you smoke marijuana, which is a crime because you want to feed your family? Because $7 an hour is only enough to feed my dog. So you make seven dollars an hour. That's not enough to feed your dog. So your response is to go out and buy marijuana, which you're claiming you don't have the money for, and smoke it. Well, I also sell it. <laughs> yes. So you're making yeah, you're all over the place. But I appreciate <laughs> the troll. I gotta move it on, Gabashi. <laughs> troll, you can troll me anytime. Come on back anytime, and I gotta go. I will. All right, man. All right, looking back in the comment section, uh, he's not black, bro. Of course, he's he's trolling, and that's that's fine. I understand. I understood he was trolling the moment he got on the box, but I let folks uh, speak their opinion. And if he wants to make himself look that way, you're 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 totally free to come on the program and do so. All right, looking in the comments, repent, Israel, Jacob. Trouble is coming. By the way, in regards to what Larry just stated about repenting, Israel thing. Have you heard about your boy, Ye, Kanye West? Apparently, was it today or yesterday that he tweeted out that he is going to have, he's going to go to DEFCON 3 on J people. I don't even want to throw the whole phrase out there because I don't want the social media page here. And you understand, folks, I am MAGA friendly. I don't ban, I don't censor, I don't block, but I cannot control what TikTok does. But Kanye West, folks in Israel, you know what religion they represent, stated he's going to go DEFCON 3 on those folks. In addition to the senator I just played you, stating that the same people who want reparations commit all the crimes and are pro-crime, we got to talk about Kanye West, because I know my MAGA folks, have began to adore Kanye West because he speaks favorably of the president, President Trump. However, his comments are undoubtedly anti-Semitic. If you want to separate yourself 
from folks that are referring to the party, uh, the group, whatever the case may be, is intolerant. You got to speak up against shit like this and get this out of your group. Before you know it, Kanye West will be being tied to the Camp Auschwitz t-shirt wear at the protest on January 6th. His statement that he's going to go DEFCON 3 on Israelis, if you don't see any issue with that statement, then you're, you're anti, anti whatever, anti-Semitic meter is broke. But I just want to point that out because Kanye has been all over right wing media. He's had two segments on Tucker Carlson and things like that. And then he follows up by doing this. I've said this before that Kanye West is, I guess the best way to put it is he's, he's uncontrollable. You don't, you don't know where he's going to go. So understand that when you guys are taking him under your umbrella and trying to say, well, we love Kanye because he speaks the truth. Yeah, but the truth he say tomorrow may not be in your best interest. All right, looking in the comments, I got dumped by text at 3 a.m. today. <laughs> uh, MAGA supporters are, I don't know what the word you said. If you don't love all people, all people, you're the problem. Well, fair enough, but I'm just simply saying... We're talking about what did the senator mean when he stated that the same folks who want reparations commit all the crimes and are pro-crime? What the hell does that mean? And is it wrong to suggest that that sounds racist as hell? If you can twist that, but you see an issue with vote for me or you ain't black, your, your racism meter is broke. If you can twist that and you see problems with, I don't want my children growing up in a racial jungle, your racism meter is broke. Because that statement sounds clear as day to me, to yours truly. And I make it clear, I prefer talking to MAGA. We have no problem having civil discourse on this channel. Call a spade a spade, call out what you want to call out. I'm fine with that. I don't ban, I don't block, I don't censor. But I want somebody to tell me how that statement it's not racist. Look at it in the comments. I see uh, Shay says it was wrong. Yeah, it was wrong. But it's also targeted. It's targeting a specific group of people. And you're going to have folks trying to suggest somehow no group was targeted. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Look at it in the comments. Yo, handsome. Call him out. Thank you. Listen, it, it's hard not to call out a statement that is that blatantly Racist. Because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They're not owed that. And just to be clear, they want reparation because they think... The, the same folks who want reparations <laughs> are pro-crime and do all the crime. What? And, and it not only was a statement horrible... It was cheered upon with nothing but glee at a, at a MAGA rally. And since that, there have been Republican senators trying to suggest it wasn't racist, trying to suggest that was not racist. If you want the quote-unquote walkaway movement that Kanye West, not Kanye West, but Candace Owens talks about all the time, or Larry Elder or some folks, you really want African Americans to see the light of the Republican Party. And there are some benefits to becoming Republican. But you got to get rid of this shit. You can't pretend like this is not harmful or it's not targeted toward the African-American community or try to turn a blind eye to that shit. Anybody with a third grade education can see that that bullshit is racist. Create a new party. You know something, uh, Prophet, we definitely need to create a new party, but that's not just for racism. And there should be multiple parties in this country. When you think about how large this country is and how many different groups, diversity and things like that, there should be multiple parties. I agree with that. It's racist because you're making it racist. Um, Dav, Cena, whatever your name is. Listen, you can try to blame, it, blame his remarks on anybody you want to blame it on. But when you say a group is doing all the crime and then you come back, well, that's not racist. You're making it that way. What group is doing all the crime? I happen to be African-American and I've never been arrested in my life. 
Not once. Never. No crime rate, no crime record at all. Nothing. I got my criminal record is probably less than a lot of folks wearing badges. So who the hell is doing all the crime? How am I personally supposed to take that statement? I have two brothers, one older, one younger. Their criminal records are clear too. How are we supposed to take that statement? Doing all the crime. I'm making it racist. Because, it's racist because I'm making it racist. How about because he said that shit is why people were calling him out on it. What he said has absolutely nothing to do with making America great. When it comes to reparations, there's no chance that shit can be passed. I've talked about it before. That's, it's not going to happen. Why would you be standing up at a MAGA rally talking about reparations? You already know everybody in the damn room is anti-reparations. But then to take it a step further and suggest that same group is committing all the crimes in the country. And when I call that out, Somehow I'm making it racist, huh? Okay, fair enough. Going back to the box, Dan Trail. Are uh, you there? Hear me, Dan Trail. Okay, so when when handsome liberal knocks his phone over, he's incensed. <laughs> <laughs> I am incensed. This shit right here. Because I know when I get my MAGA folks on, I'm dying to hear the spin because I don't see how you could spin that. Hey, man, when you, every time you play that video, my dogs start to howl in, in agony from the dog whistling. <laughs> you know, so to me, that ain't, to me, that's so bad. It, it's not even dog whistling at that point. When you say one group is committing all the crimes, just come out and say black people were bad for the country. I mean, just come out and say America would be a better country without black people. I mean, that's about as open of a racist statement as you can be. Other than just coming out and saying, I hate them, that's about as open, open overtly, or I don't even know what the synonym for, because I'm so pissed off hearing it. But that's about as clear as day as you can get. Well, prepare to hear all of the uh explaining i'm just going to say it like that of and, and the uh trying to make it not racist to say such things and how it's true and all this but i usually combat it with okay i read a stat last night that 25% of all educated college educated people in America are black. So this means if 13% of the population are or 25% of the college educated people, we are overperforming. <laughs> and, well, uh, according according to what he said, yeah, everybody is overperforming because yeah, we just all cavemen out here raping, pillaging, and, and stealing every damn thing. <laughs> yeah, um, if it was any type of reasoning that I had that I could say in my mind that I can see why someone is voting for Trump or being around or supportive of that crowd, it just went out the door when you play when we when you play that. And I'm seeing people in your comments trying to explain it. Okay, so I'm if you looking for him though, I gotta say I'm looking in the comments. I'm reading the comments. I don't really see anybody trying to. Ex you give me something you've seen in here. Or somebody, I saw somebody tell me it's only racist because you're making it that way, but I haven't seen anybody. I, I don't know because I want to hear what they have to say. I tend to pride myself on the ability of being able to play devil's advocate, even if it's something I totally disagree with. But I cannot see how you could spin that to be anything but intolerant towards blacks. Okay, I'm looking at one right now. Someone just deflected the Biden. Hey, Biden <laughs> says that racist stuff in that. front of people and all of that, and this and that and the other. Boy, <laughs> here we go. You know, you know what I say about free shipping, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see that. I did see the Biden, and, and I and I mentioned that in the broadcast is that if you can see racism 
and vote for me, you ain't black, or I don't want my kids growing up in a racial jungle or something. But mm -hmm. the same people who want reparations commit all the crimes and are pro-crime, and you don't see no racism in that, your racism meter is broken. I mean, it's just, this, and he said this shit yesterday. It wasn't 1970. It wasn't th 20 years ago. He said this shit this weekend. I thought I you were. <laughs> I thought you were playing a clip from George Wallace in the sixties. I was like, "What yeah, exactly. what is retro day?" <laughs> and, and, and it wouldn't. It should surprise no one that he's from Alabama. It really should surprise no one. But that shit was about as bad as you can get. I, like I said, just come out and say you believe black people are bad for this country. That's all. I mean, they're committing all the crimes. They want reparations that they don't deserve. They are pro crime. What so, else is there left to say? So in the end, the most the most shocking thing or the most telling thing was the standing ov ovation and the claps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Black man bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If he had said that shit and they booed him or they went quiet, it would have looked bad. But to, to get that applause like that, are you not entertained at this racism type crowd? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't even know what else to say. But then, Trey, I got to move it on. I'm doing a lunch break. I'm hyped. Okay. <laughs> you didn't help it out at all. I just want to, hey, make sure you check your blood pressure, all right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, my God. My God. All right, man. Good, good, all good right, conversation. All right, now. All right. Have a good one. All right. Looking in the comments. Uh, yep, the crowd applause. Yeah, they sure did. Uh, what does it say here? Yep, that's why I don't. I... Then, what does that say? Yep, that's why I won't ever stand 10 toes with this fake patriotic country. Yeah, you know something? And that's an interesting point. When you see athletes taking a knee and it's not being patriotic to America, what are the chances that it has something to do with shit like that? Just think about that. Because he is, a, he is an actual senator from Alabama. But just for folks who are wondering what we're talking about... <laughs> They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They are not owed that. And just to be clear, they want reparation. <laughs> what, what the hell? Somebody come in here and let me know why that should not be viewed harmful to an African-American. Why an African-American such as myself should just view that as a true statement? As something that's better for improving America? I mean, I'm assuming he's talking about making America great, right? Uh, why do you play this bits and pieces? Uh, the the McCrib is bad. I, can't, I'm not, I don't have time to play his entire speech. You're asking me, why do I play bits and pieces? Because the bits and pieces are so damn inflammatory. You think that he's going to say that the same group that wants reparations are the same group that's pro-crime and does all the crime, and then somehow over the course of the entire speech make that sound legitimate? Is that what you're telling me? Well, play the whole speech. Let's see what the context was. If I say your mom is a B, do you need to hear any more of the phrase to, well, maybe she is if you play the rest of it? No. Come on now. Let me go back to the box. You don't need to hear the rest of that. Shame. 69 times two. All right. I don't know what else to say. Like I said, it's got me damn hot because I love hey, I to hear somebody explain that. Shay, what up? What's going on? Can you hear me? I don't even know, man. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. I'll tell you what, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a white person, but I, I would be really upset. My I was adopted into a black family, and um, I, I, I don't understand why they would want to, why somebody would say that, to be honest with you, unless they're just trying to start a race war. I I, I broke a lot of laws. I mean, I, I've done a lot of bad stuff. I've been probably locked up more than the people they're talking about. And I, I don't know. My brother, he's black, and he's he was right along with me. And I'll tell you one thing right now. He ain't looking for no reparations or none of that crap. Yeah. And uh, I, I just – the politics today is it, – it, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life.
So uh, it's just it's just, it going to get worse. How should it be viewed, though? The fact that not only they, can he say they, something that, that that is that horrible, but that a crowd of people would cheer that on. Very racist. I I I, I viewed it as racist. I mean, I mean, I, I, I don't know how else you could take it. I mean, to me, that's racist. Yeah. That's at and, the top of the line. I mean. But the <laughs> I talk to Republicans, folks on the right, that tell me all the time that Biden is the most racist president in history. Bi the, the Democrats are the party of, of slavery, party of Jim Crow laws. They're racist. How are we supposed to view the Republicans when they're saying this at their rallies, when they're there are Republican senators, in addition to the one that said that bullshit, that are defending it. How, I mean, exactly. how can you view that party after that? You, you can't. You really can't. I, I, I view them both as racist, to be honest with you. Both parties. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how can you not? Both sides done both. I mean, both sides been racist. That is true. That is true. But this happens. I mean, really, I mean, this, but, but it, it's a sad, bad, sad thing. Yeah, what makes this bad though is this just happened this weekend. This saying, you know, yeah, some of the stuff it. I hear about Biden with Senator Byrd. Senator Byrd's been dead for for twelve years. This happened this weekend. I mean, this is not something yeah. you you don't have to go back at all for this. This just happened this weekend, and it's like, yeah, it, 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 it's done at a. Let me ask you this: so I saw this in the comments. You can you can tell me whatever you want. I don't like I said I don't censor opinions. Someone stated. That President Trump is the one that has opened the door for this type of rhetoric. How do you view that comment? I, I don't think he did. I, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't think he did. I mean, it's it's been going on forever. I mean, Joe you know, Biden, when he was senator, did it. I mean, he did it as a vice president. I mean, everybody's been doing it. I mean, what, well, what can you really mean? say? What about the notion that the FBI is claiming that this stuff has start has saw an uptick? I understand you saying it, it, that it's always happened, and I agree with that. But how do you view the FBI saying that this stuff has began to accelerate? Well, that's a true thing. I mean, when I, I mean, when all, oh, all, oh, I'm telling you, I was adopted by black people, and I'm as white as you can get, and mm -hmm. I'm never, ever, ever heard a racial thing in my life until I started watching the politics. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's not a lot. That's where it has come from. Historically, uh, when you think about Jim Crow laws and even slavery and things like that, those are the, those are the people that's been legislating this stuff. Now, they've used the police often to enforce it, but yeah, I would, I would suggest that politicians are really the source of most racism because they're the ones that pass yeah. all the laws to make it happen. They're pushing it, and I don't know yeah. why. I mean, they really, really are pushing it. I, I, I mean, I, I got millions of friends, and I, they don't do that. I don't, I don't know why. You know, I mean, everybody else is doing it, but I mean, I guess you got to have a level head, and all, all the people I know do. And I don't. Right. I, I mean, I get it. I'd be pissed off. I would be pissed off because that was wrong. That was so, wrong. What he said, man. So should any of this, since it was said at a Trump rally, should any of this be reflective upon choose, deciding whether or not you want to vote for that party? I mean, it said at a yeah. Trump rally pushing for Republican politicians. If you view this as racism, would you look at the Republican Party and say that it looks like you guys endorsed this because you're cheering him on when he says it? I wouldn't look at the whole party, but I would look at who's being elected. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't vote for him, and I'm a Republican. I'll be honest with you. I, I would not vote for the guy. He, he's trying to start something, and I think, really, to be honest with you, I think it's wrong. I think Fair it's enough. wrong, and <laughs> I, I, I just believe that there's other ways of going by stuff, you know, uh, you know. This race thing, I, I guess, really never really, really hit hard until Trump, I guess, because, I mean, I just don't understand. I, I really just this world is getting to the point where where it's going to be bad if people don't change. 
I, I agree. With that. I guess I'll say this because you mentioned earlier in our conversation that there has been clear evidence of racism on both sides. And I agree with you on that. But the difference I've seen is when Biden, for instance, vote for me, you ain't black. He was hammered by the black community to the point where he had to apologize. Even Kamala Harris during the debates called him out and made him look like his past was horrible. To the point, once again, where he had to apologize. On the right, when something is said that is controversial, you don't get those apologies. You get denial, yeah. right? I didn't say anything wrong, which is exactly what I'm playing now. That clip, no one on the right is apologizing for that. They're denying well, it was somebody, at all. I'll tell you what, somebody better, because that's 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 dead wrong. I, I really believe that 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 you shouldn't say nothing like that. Yeah. All right. Well, well I, I appreciate you being honest. It's certainly you better get your candor. Certainly coming from the, the right side of the aisle. I gotta move it on, Shay. Anytime you see me on, feel free to come on back through though. You're always welcome back. Well, I appreciate it. Hey, you take care. All right, looking in the comments here, uh George Wallace ended up in a wheelchair. <laughs> I don't get what that means. Hey, Shay, go ahead and drop it. For some reason, my, my device is frozen here. Uh, get out your Buick and go to work. B oh, Lone Stroke. Love the name. I haven't had a Buick. Wow, I did. My first car was a Buick. <laughs> now, that's an old man's car. No, I take that back to Buick Enclave. I owned a Buick Enclave about 10 years ago. Vehicle. Uh, looking in the comments here. I'm from Alabama and black. Tuberville out of line, pulling all black down negatively as a whole. Defend 3747. Yeah, I, I'm still curious as to who will try to paint his words as somehow not being intolerant. Now, I have somebody already say that. Well, why didn't you play his whole speech in its entirety? Probably because it gets worse. I wouldn't even want to play the whole speech, but. I'll give you what we're talking about here for anybody who may be wondering what are we speaking on. <laughs> they want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They are not owed that. Now just to be so... Clear, He's suggesting that the same free people who want reparations are doing all the crime and pro-crime. Now, I guess there may be some folks who will try to spin it and say that not everybody who wants reparations are not black. There are some whites on the liberal side of the aisle who believe reparations are in order as well, I guess. But when you think about who's asking for reparations, Blacks overwhelmingly come to mind, period. So when he said the same people that want reparations are doing all the crime and pro-crime, this is an anti-black statement. It's a it's a hit on black people, period. It would have been very simple for the guy to just simply come out and say, I don't like black people, or I don't think blacks are good for America, or something of that nature. America would be a better place if African Americans did not inhabit this land. Might as well say it like that. If we're doing all the crime and you get rid of black people, crime goes away. Crime goes completely away because we're doing all the crime. That's how anyone with an ear should take that statement. And I looked in the comments. Uh, Nick Quarter says, I'm spinning this. Nick, I'm here and I hope you are too. Come in the box. I'll give you priority. I want to hear... How I'm spinning this. I want to hear your take on, maybe maybe you're here to educate your humble correspondent. I am by no means always right. I make it clear, MAGA friendly. I don't ban, I don't block, I don't censor. I prefer speaking to MAGA. Come in the box, let me know how I'm spinning it, where I'm getting it wrong, give you plenty of time to talk. Don't ban, don't block, don't censor. I don't even talk down to my guests. I give you a chance to get your point across. Nick, the box is open to you. Uh, and I see in the comments, I see uh, Papia says, hell yeah, I want to hear him too. I, I want to hear him. Not anyone would hear that only people looking to be offended. Funny bikini girl. If he says 
the same people who want reparations commit all the crimes. Do you really need to be looking to be offended to not hear and interpret something that is clearly offensive? He's saying a specific group commits all the crimes. Do you take that as a compliment? He's saying without this group of people, we would not be dealing with crime. The same folks who want reparations commit all the crimes. And not only do they commit all the crimes, they are pro-crime. Do you need to be looking to be offended to find offense in that? How much does someone need to talk down to you before you become offended? You could be looking to have an ice cream sundae. And if somebody just walks up and starts saying you ugly as hell, you weren't looking to be offended. They found a way to do it. That's the way we look at this. All right, looking in the box here, free for all. Somebody let me know what I'm getting wrong. Somebody is telling me I know how. You drive Buick, so you're saying you support. <laughs> Reasonable writing, who drives a Buick? I'm not in a Buick. Learn your cars before you get into the comments talking about it. You're not Jay Leno. Learn vehicles. This is not a Buick. They don't even make Buicks this size. The size of this SUV is bigger than any Buick. They don't even make a Buick the size of the vehicle I'm in. All right. <laughs> Didn't we pay rep rep reparations to J.P. Morgan for ending slavery? I don't know, but that ain't got nothing to do with doing, doing, all, the cr doing all the crime. Uh, free for all. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hey, what's up, man? Um, no, no. Uh, did you hear uh, what I played? Yeah, I did. And it's okay. It's, you know, at, let me be the second caller um, to say that I'm a conservative. Call it MAGA if you want. I, I don't know if they're separate or the same thing these days. But uh, let me be the second caller to say that comment was bullshit. And yeah, I do see the, I don't even know if I call it racist undertones. I, I just call it, I call it, call a spade a spade, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anybody needs to make excuses for anybody else. I don't think that comment is indicative of, of, of all Republicans or conservatives, but that one certainly was. That, and that was a bullshit comment. And, and I know that the people I know, they, they don't think or speak that way. So, um, yeah, call a spade a spade. Call him out on his bullshit. It was bullshit. Any idea why he would be able to say that? And, and, and get applause at the rally for a statement like that. Well, the only thing I can think of, uh, and, and I'm sure that there were people in that audience that, that, that felt the same way, right? I, I'm not going right. to assume one, I'm not going to assume one way or the other, but anytime you get riled up and, 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 and say some, some curse words at a, at a, at a political rally, people are going to get riled up and maybe they True. really didn't think, maybe they really weren't thinking about what he actually said. Uh, and and hopefully when they hear a playback of it, they'll do some soul searching and say, "Whoa, why did I why did I applaud that shit?" Right? Um, yeah. But I, I'm sure there were people that that had this, the same sentiment, right? You you can't police everybody and their and their thoughts and, and what they feel in their heart. Um, but I don't think that's indicative of of the entire party, right? Like we like the previous caller said, we've got people on both sides that that, that say this sort of shit. Um, but but yeah, it was bullshit. Yeah. Well, how about this? In the comments, someone is saying that when they hear this, they don't think he's talking about black people, but rather radical Democrats. How do you view that? Do radical Democrats commit all the crime? Uh, no. I mean, Nancy Pelosi or Bernie Sanders would be considered a radical Democrat. I don't, I don't imagine Nancy Pelosi doing a drive-by. She couldn't hold a gun. I don't, so when you say, yeah, I don't see the radical Democrat part of it. No, I mean, that's, it, crime is crime. You, it, you, don't, you don't put uh, a political party on crime. Um, so, no, that's, that's not true either. Uh, yeah. Nancy Pelosi's yeah. Nancy Pelosi's crimes are a lot higher dollar, right? Like, yeah, they're yeah. they're they're backpedaling on some legislation for that. Uh, but but no, I, I don't agree with that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I I would say the same thing. I agree with you. If Nancy Pelosi is committing crimes, it's going to be white collar crimes. And if you if you want to suggest the people who are who are asking for reparations, 
they're not committing white collar crimes if that's what he's talking about. I'm I'm not I'm gonna guess that when he was talking about the folks seeking reparations committing all the crimes, he's not talking about robbing people of their 401ks. He's talking about purse yeah. snatchings and, and street crimes. Well, I mean, it, it's as simple as this. If nobody can assume what he meant, if if that's what he meant, uh, he could have he could have said it better. Um, but I I mean I think I think the the what, we can we can not assume, but but what we can assume based on what he said, what he meant, uh, and he would have a hell of a lot of explaining to do if that's not what he meant. Um, so yeah, I, I, at, at minimum he owes he owes some people an apology. I don't know if that apology would be heartfelt or not, but yeah, that it, like I said, I'll make it I'll make it short. It was a bullshit comment, um, and and I don't think it's representative of of an entire political party. Uh, so just, just like just like what I other people said on the other side of the aisle, I don't think that's representative of all Democrats. Um, okay, just, I got someone. For instance, I got somebody saying that me, you know, with the host of the program, I'm actually putting a racist spin on it. Now, is there a way you could see this as not being racist? Uh, based on what we know, no. Yeah. So it's not a no, spin. I it's don't. the way. Yeah, it's it's the way most people would interpret it as being racist. You, yeah, I I believe most people would, and no, I don't think you're yeah. spinning it, and I don't know if the caller really has ever listened or that that person has ever really listened to you before. So no. Um, uh, well, but hey, man. Me, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. No. To me, the moment you say the same people who are seeking reparations, it, that instantly draws up the, the thought of black people. Radical Democrats? No, you don't think of radical Democrats when you think about people asking for reparations. You think about black people. So That's instantly, correct. Correct. yeah, instantly the instantly from that point on, everything you attach to that is going to be viewed as you're talking about black people. The same people that are seeking reparations are committing the crimes and pro crime. This is this is a That's string all right behind each other about blacks, not radical Democrats. Yeah, I again, uh, that's that's what I thought of, and I mean, as soon as I heard it, I, I cringed. I was like, "Ooh, that's that that's not right." And uh, yeah. and if he meant if he meant radical Democrats, it's pretty easy to say radical Democrats, right? Right, right, <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but yeah, hey, hey, brother, have a good day. Um, I'll, I'll be listening. Thanks, man. Absolutely a pleasure. Come on back to me, Tim. Free for all. Good talk. Yep. All right. Looking in the comments, I watched the whole speech on YouTube, and this comment still comes off as racist. Lewis, I applaud you for watching that bullshit, but, and I, I understand folks try to defend it. Free for all. Go ahead and drop because my thing is, there you go. All right. Um, I understand folks trying to, well, I need to hear it in context. It's, you can say something in a quick sound bite. That is so horrible that it doesn't matter what the context is from that point. I mean, I can say things about the United States. If I'm a politician and I say America has been the most sinful country on earth and I'm running for office, that soundbite alone is enough to destroy my political career. You don't need to hear everything else I said. You're going to hear that as an anti-American slogan. What this guy said is anti-African American. Period. You know, hearing the rest of it is not going to clear that up. But it's it's awesome to see folks trying to somehow suggest that. But I, I, for the life of me, I don't get how you think hearing more of that's going to mean anything. Well, let's just roll. <laughs> They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. They are not owed that. The people that do the crime. Who are the people in this country that do crime? Is it only people who want reparations? If you take away the people who want reparations, there's nobody left that does crime? Who are the people that do the crime? Because folks are telling me I'm spinning this. If you are anti-reparations, does that mean you don't do any crime? Somebody let me know, where am I getting this wrong? He coached black players at Auburn, Alabama. Yeah, I, I am aware of that, um, that he was a coach. I don't know if that really means anything, though. Um, that's his history. You know, 
people change. Maybe he felt one way then and he feels a different way now. People do change because we often like to tie people to things they said years ago and try to somehow make that appear as if that's how they feel now, such as some of Biden's statements. Senator Byrd, I hear that all the time. Tying Biden. I had a girl on TikTok today that I commented on her page. Brought up a comment that Joe Biden said in 1977. To try to suggest that he doesn't like blacks. Trump was a Democrat in 1977. How many of you MAGA supporters would vote for a Democrat? You're not holding him accountable because you realize people change over a period of time. What's so bad about what we're talking about now is it happened this fucking weekend. He didn't change that damn quick. So this is, it's exceptionally modern. Watch the people in chat trying to make excuses, sad people. Well, I will say this, uh, that chick Beth, is that I've had a couple callers on that were Republican, supported Trump, and I make it clear, I prefer callers that support Trump. This is a MAGA-friendly program. But even they said the comment was bullshit. I, fortunately, I haven't had anybody on here, at least in, at least they called in, that tried to portray what he said as legitimate. They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They want to take over what you have. They want what you got. What does that even mean? Everything about what he said makes they, and you can fill in the blank who you think they is, sound predatory. They want to take your shit. They want to tell you how to live. They want reparations from you. And they are the ones that's doing crime. Just come out and say America will be better off without African Americans. I believe Rush Limbaugh, may he rest in peace, once stated the streets were better during slavery. The streets were safer during slavery. In other words, when African Americans were in bondage, the crime, America was a pretty safe place to live. Now, I don't think he really considered how safe it was for African Americans during that period of time. Probably wasn't concerned with that. But he did state that during slavery, the streets were safer. This is the kind of stuff we hear in folks. So when you guys look at liberals and, and, and wonder why the hell are they just coming up with this bullshit saying we're racist when we're not, this is the stuff we hear. And as far as I'm concerned, Tuberville down in Alabama, that Senator there, that one is so clear. We could talk about the arguments back and forth about good people on both sides or some of the stuff that has been defended from Trump. To me, what he said, Trump's anything, somebody could say that Trump said, I don't know of anything that Trump said that would be in that category. Now, Trump has tweeted some pretty bad shit, but this came out of his mouth. This statement here came out of Tuberville's mouth. I don't know anyone that could that has said something I can think of that's worse than that in recent times. I mean, the same people that want reparations instantly invokes thoughts of black people because that is overwhelmingly who in this country are talking about reparations. It's not Japanese internment camp survivors. It's not Jewish Holocaust survivors. It's not Chinese or even Irish slaves, as you guys call them, or indentured servants. It's black people. When you think about who's asking for reparations, it's overwhelmingly black people. That's the first picture that comes to your mind when you say the people that are seeking their reparations black people and now i'm looking in the comments <laughs> america the radical left <laughs> i have you know something yeah that, to me that is crazy it's not the radical left that are over when you think about people seeking reparations you don't think about who they vote for because there's a hell of a lot of African Americans speaking in favor of reparations or speaking out against police brutality who don't vote at all. They don't even show up to the polls. Some of them are not even old enough to vote. It's black people. Don't try to change it to meet some other narrative. Everybody asking for reparations are not political. Radical left. <laughs> These people don't even vote. 
A lot of these folks, and African Americans, by the way, I hate to even say it this way, but African Americans are terrible at voting, particularly the under 40 crowd. The under 40 crowd in the African American community, their participation during election time is horrendous. They're not voting. Radical left. <laughs> these people aren't showing up to vote. You think when you see a group walking down the street chanting Black Lives Matter or chanting that they want reparations, they're all registered Democrats? Is that what you believe? <laughs> you believe they're all registered Democrats, huh? Okay, fair enough. I will tell you this. There is a large amount of these people who probably couldn't point to Nancy Pelosi if you put her picture right in front of your face. Don't even know who this woman is. These people don't follow politics. They're not radical leftists. <laughs> They're black. They are black people. But if you want to try to spin it so that you can say they're radical left to avoid admitting what this dude said was racist as hell, go for it. I would also contend to you or submit to you that there are plenty of Democrats who are not big fans of reparation. I stated it my own personal self that I believe reparations will be too divisive to try to implement in this country. I've never preached being pro-reparations. But yet I heard his statement and I know he's talking about me. I know he's talking about people that look like me and I'm not hardcore in favor of reparations. But I know what that Senator Tuberville from Alabama is talking about. He's talking about black people, period. Uh, looking in the comments, Rep Republicans I'm around believe people are equal, POC are just Americans. Well, uh, Terrapin, here's the issue with racism. No one steps up and says, hi, my name is John, I'm a racist. Hi, my name is Ken, I don't like black people. Nobody says that. Even the Klan states that they are not racist, they are just for the promotion of the white race. So if you try to point out who is intolerant in this country, virtually everybody will have an excuse why they're not. Even during the time of Jim Crow laws, the folks who were implementing those laws were saying they weren't racist. Hence the phrase, separate but equal. We're not racist. They got equal stuff too. Now, it wasn't equal at all, which is what the Supreme Court ultimately ruled. This ain't equal. But they were saying, no, we're not racist. So it's not uncommon for folks to suggest, I don't know anybody who's racist. I've never met a racist. Yeah, because they're not going to tell you that. Nobody comes out and says they're racist. It just doesn't happen like that. Unless, the, the, you know, I guess you find some very lowly, lowly educated person that doesn't have a damn thing to lose might tell you. But certainly not in a political sphere. There's no one who would deny that there's been a lot of racist politicians throughout American history. Nobody would deny that. I mean, slavery and Jim Crow laws couldn't have existed without it. Try finding a politician throughout American history that admitted he was racist. Even somebody like the guy, um, segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation for all. Ask him was he was racist, he would say no. They all say no. So you're never going to find somebody that's racist. They're always going to say they're not. Farrakhan will tell you he's not racist. Doesn't stop him from talking about blue-eyed devils and blaming everything on the white man. But if you ask him, is he racist? No, he's not. So, yeah, you're, you're, if that's what you're using to judge on whether you've seen a racist person or not, you will never see one. I had a white boy down in Kentucky tell me that. No. Yeah. MAGA do not, MAGA do want freedom or a, a autocracy a king. Cubs 1952, love the name. I will tell you this, and I've said it before, that on paper, Trump deserved a second term. He just couldn't stop tweeting and talking shit. But in regards to your comment about Trump, people wanting a, an autocracy or a king, as they say, Trump is a businessman. Trump would have been a lot more effective as a dictator. Because he is not a team player. To be commander in chief in this country requires team player type credentials. You don't get to boss Congress in the Senate. You have to work with Congress in the Senate. You have to make phone calls all times of night to make sure they're going to agree to a bill you want to pass. 
You can't just send them some shit and demand they sign it. In a business, if it's your company, either they listen or they lose their jobs. Trump tried to come to the White House and run it that way, which is why you had folks like John McCain walk up there and give him the thumbs down and destroy his legislation. So when you say that they want an autocracy or a king, there may be some validity to that because as a king or a dictator, he probably would be a far more successful, more effective leader because then you don't have to listen to anyone. You can just do whatever the hell you want, but that's not how America runs. Uh, check the statements by Councilwoman of Southern California. Is there another one out there? <laughs> oh, God. Southern Cal, I, give me a name on that defense. Now, if his COVID response was better, he would have have he would have won. Danny Dan, you know, Trump's COVID response could have simply been to do what the CDC and the FB, FDA was suggesting. That way, if they fucked up, I took the advice of medical professionals. And this is what they ordered. And then obviously the medical professionals will step up and tell you where it was a new illness. And unfortunately we made some mistakes and things like that. And it will come out as a unified message. But instead what you had is the medical professional suggesting one thing and Trump suggesting something else with the entire country knowing he was not a medical professional. So I do agree his COVID response was jacked, but I do believe that if he wasn't tweeting and pissing people off, he probably would have gotten reelected, particularly because he's running against Biden. And there's not a lot of love for President Biden. It's just Trump was pissing people off just that much. And what I don't understand with Biden's poll numbers still being horrible is why they would send Trump back. Why not put DeSantis on a ticket right now, which He's obviously well-liked among the Republican Party. Why not put someone like that on the party who would unite the party, the Liz Cheney's, the Mitt Romney's, the Bush family, the Reagan families would all get behind a Ron DeSantis. Trump, on the other hand, is going to have probably at least 30% of the Republican Party saying, I don't want that guy again. It's not liberals. We're talking about Republicans. You think Cheney, Mitt Romney, George W. Bush, Jeb Bush... The McCain family, you think they're going to vote for a, a Trump ticket? No, but they would vote for a DeSantis ticket. So I don't get why the Republicans would send Trump back up there. That makes no sense. This is a time to cash in and dominate. You've got the liberals pinned up against the economy, pinned up against bad troop withdrawal in, in Afghanistan, you got Putin doing all kinds of bullshit. China threatening to do all kinds of bullshit. Kim Jong-un committing all kinds of bullshit. And the fear of Iran still being real. This is the time to cash in. Send somebody who would unify the party. Why would you send a guy that's going to divide everybody? Uh, Green Booger. <laughs> love the name. You said Cheney with a question mark. Yeah, Cheney. Listen, I get the lack of love for Cheney, that's fine. But Cheney still has thousands of fans. There are still thousands of people that like Cheney. Not to mention, if not millions, not to mention, despite how MAGA may view Cheney, how many favorites you think her and her dad has throughout Washington to also attempt to thwart a, a return of Trump? For all you guys that often suggest Trump had trouble since day one when he became president. You think if he wins in 2024, that's not going to happen again with all of these enemies? Why send that guy? I'm not saying this out of hatred for Trump. I'm saying this even if I was on the right side of the aisle, just meaningful advice. Why would you send back the most divisive guy during one of the weakest times in democratic history? This is an easy, this should be an easy victory for you. Why would you send this guy back? The most controversial guy you have, you're going to send him back when they have a weak president in Joe Biden. Trump still has work to do. America, but send somebody else that can do the damn work. If you believe Trump has, Trump still has work to do, was that American Ninja or something like that? If you believe that Trump still has work to do, I don't see a lot of Trump's mindset 
legislation or the direction he would take America that's all that much different from DeSantis. Get Trump in office. To, I mean, get, get DeSantis in office, and I don't think you're going to miss much of a beat from DeSantis. I don't believe, after hearing folks say stuff like this, I don't believe is the Make America Great part you guys want. I think you missed the rhetoric. You missed the tweets. You missed the excitement. You can get all of Trump's legislation in the Senate with a hell of a lot less of the orbiting rhetoric. And that's the problem is you want that rhetoric, which is why you're not in power right now. But if you truly just wanted to make America great, you wanted the pro-life legislation, you wanted America to be portrayed the way you think it should be on the world stage and all of that stuff, DeSantis would be more than what you need to fit that. And he would unify the party. And you're hearing it from a liberal. And you know it's true. That's, the, <laughs> that's what's worse is you actually know it because if Trump stepped down, all of MAGA would go right with DeSantis. So you know it's true. You just miss this dude because of you like how he talks to the liberals. He sticks it to people. He names names, insults. You like that shit. He's a typical New Yorker and all of that. You like that shit. That's why you want him. And that's why he can't come back is because people are not going to vote for that. But if it, and as a liberal, all I can say to the right wingers is thank you. Thank you for keep. Thank you for the idea that you're going to keep focusing on Trump when you got us by the short and curlies. You got us at one of the weakest points we've been. We should be trounced in the midterms. Yet it's close. Yet it is very close. It's not because Biden is doing a good job. You won't hear that here, even from a liberal. It's because we keep making it, <laughs> we keep making it a referendum on Trump. Trump is not even on a ticket. Why the hell is he holding rallies right now? Why is that? He hasn't even announced he's running for president. But yet he's going all over the country holding rallies. Why is that? If he doesn't run, he should apologize to places where the candidate lost because of him. Why is he injecting himself into this race? I hear folks tell me all the time, your humble correspondent, Trump lives rent-free in your head. You can't stop talking about Trump. Why is he holding rallies in a midterm year in which he has not announced? You don't want Trump to live rent-free in people's heads. He shouldn't be doing shit like that. He's not living rent-free in our heads. He's paying a mortgage. He's traveling the country, making sure his name stays out there, selling Trump 2024 uh, gear and all kinds of other shit. He is more active in politics right now than some of the, some of the actual candidates running. He's doing that. Uh, he's already announced. He hasn't officially announced how uh, Jerry Williams. He has not officially announced. Um, because apparently if he does announce, the GOP will stop paying his legal fees. So I don't think he's going to announce. He won't announce it for the end of 2020, 2022, probably. But I do believe he's going to run uh, Blue Eyed Bleach. I do. Blue Eyed Bleach team. I, everybody believes he's going to run. I, I certainly believe that. But let the midterm candidates have their shine. Don't spoil their shine. Let them run on the merits for which they are. Because tying people to Trump can either really help them or really hurt them. There are plenty of areas in the country where tying you to Trump can guarantee you a victory, such as Herschel Walker in the primary. Without Trump, he would have not won that primary. Dr. Oz is, a, is another example where MAGA wanted the African-American woman there in Pennsylvania. So Trump can really help a campaign, but he can also destroy some. And there have been campaigns he destroyed. Let these people have their own damn shine. Let them, let them win on their own merits. So that's what we're talking about. Rent free? No, he's out there actively putting himself in the middle of shit. Einstein was smart too. <laughs> yeah, he was. Um... I saw him say with my eyes. Well, and that's all I'm saying is that's, that's the comment we're talking about. I'll be out here tonight at 7 o'clock because I'm really wanting to hear some MAGA give me an example, give me their best example of why what um, Senator Tuberville said was somehow legitimate, 
not racist, not anti-black. I can give you a host of knots, but I, I just, I don't want, for anybody who wants to keep talking about vote for me or you ain't black or some of the Biden statements, this has to be ranked as one of them. They want crime because they want to take over what you got. They want to control what you have. They want reparation because they think the people that do the crime are owed that. Bullshit. They think the people that do the crime are owed reparations. Wow. In that speech, he also said that we're pro-crime. It's, it's in a different part of that speech for those who asked why I didn't play it in full context. But he also says that that's a black-eyed bleach demon. That individual is Senator Tuberville. He's a senator from Alabama. He said that at a Trump rally this weekend. That senator was in the state of Nevada, if I'm correct, fighting because the Nevada Senate race is getting pretty close. And a senator from Alabama went there and got on stage and said that at a MAGA rally. Just wanted to point that out because folks always wonder why the hell you guys keep saying that MAGA or Trump is racist and all of that when Biden has said you ain't black and all of that. That was said at a MAGA rally to a hell of a lot of applause and cheers that the same people who want reparations are the ones that are doing the crime. <laughs> and when you, <laughs> I don't know, what, like I said, it makes it sound like if it wasn't for black people, there would be nobody in this country doing crime. It's only black people. I mean, the same people who want reparations are the ones that do the crime. And this whole audience uh, is cheering at that shit. Just understand that anytime from now on you hear people say they believe the Republican Party is racist. Now I understand Tuberville doesn't represent every damn Republican out there. That's a legitimate statement. However, he said that at a Trump rally to nothing but applause. And so far, there has not been many Republicans step up and say that was some bullshit. How many Republicans have pointed out how racist vote for me you ain't black is? They're not saying that about this. They're not saying, to me, this is a hell of a lot more clear. Vote for me or you ain't black, at worst, might question the intelligence of a black person. You're not a smart enough voter to know or make your own choice. So you either vote for me or you ain't black. To me, that's the most insulting way I can look at it. But accusing blacks of committing all the crime in this country, the same people that do the crime want reparation. As if, if it wasn't for that group of people, there would be nobody doing crime. To me, this sounds way worse than that. So if you don't, if you're not hearing it from that group, then to me, it sounds like their racial barometer is broken. Anyhow, folks, I do got to get out of here. This shit hyped me up. It's a lunch break live as always. I'll be out here tonight at 7 p.m. We're going to be talking about this. And the fact that Kanye West tweeted out that he's going to go DEFCON 3 on J people. 